Oops. Bonjour. <laughs> Some problem with the intro. Prepositions in French, part two, is the title of this video because last time I served you hefty portions of prepositions in French. And I bet that deep down you knew that wasn't all. You knew that more prepositions were coming. So perhaps unsurprisingly in this video, we are covering much, much more prepositions detailed with examples and don't worry, accompanied by the customary English translation. So are you ready? Let's go. Prepositions in French. Last time we defined what it was, covered already many of them. Now we're going to divide all the prepositions we're going to cover today in three categories. Prepositions of movement, of time, and prepositions in space to locate objects. Very, very cool and stimulating for the brain. Let's start with prepositions of movement. And here we're going to have only six. What am I saying? Only five. Only five of them. F91. Let's say F91 was a person. F91 is walking toward you. F91 marche vers toi. Someone walking in your direction. Marcher vers quelqu'un. Now, going to the airport is going à l'aéroport. Zirk va à l'aéroport. Zirk is going to the airport. And what makes this preposition so special is that it's so common. When you're going someplace, a public place, you're going to use à. À l'aéroport, à la banque, au magasin. Notice that I used au in the case of magasin. And it's different in the case of O plus something that starts with a consonant and it is a masculine word. Au magasin, à l'aéroport, um, au marché. And this is very common. This preposition is really, really common. So really try to pay attention to those kind of prepositions like vers, which again are common too, but not as common as A. So if you're just starting out, this one is key. This is a key preposition to start with. And here we have jusqu'à, which means to in English, but it's a bit special. Let's see. We went to the gold mine. On a été jusqu'à la mine d'or. Notice that I didn't say on a été à la mine d'or. Here I say on a été jusqu'à, up to the gold mine. It means that before um, going to the gold mine, there was some kind of travel to be done before it even happened, before you even reached that point. There was some kind of journey. There was some kind of effort maybe that was put into going to the gold mine. On a été jusqu'à la mine d'or and not further. We went up to the gold mine, but not maybe to the diamond mine. So we stopped midway through or halfway through. See, it is, it is more subtle. And in English, we could just say we went to the gold mine. But here we want to specify specifically that we went up to the gold mine and not after. Or maybe there was a struggle to get there. Um, and so we have to specify that we had the strength to go to the gold mine and not further. Um, so this is a bit more subtle. Now, much more easy, much easier to translate is from. Vous revenez de la mine. You're back from the mine. And there's a lot of conversations about mines. Have you ever been to a mine and investigated what was inside? Have you ever dug special stones from a mine? Mm, probably not, but who knows? If you have, please leave me a comment and tell me how it was for you to dig um, uh, rocks and, you know, investigate the mine. It can be very interesting. Lastly, we have par. L'aéronef est passé par ici. The aircraft, and this is a fancy word for airplane in French. L'aéronef. Also, it's also an old-fashioned word, and I really like it for that. L'aéronef est passé par ici. The aircraft passed by there. So when you pass by a street or you pass by some place, you're going to use par in French. 
very clear, very easy to translate. And these were the five prepositions of movement I wanted to cover in this video with you, which are uh, very useful and very um, uh, sufficient uh, to continue learning prepositions in French in terms of movement. Now, we're going to focus on prepositions of time. And those, again, extremely important. If you're not very familiar with them now, it's really time to start uh, mastering them. I don't know what level you are at, but it's time, regardless of where you stand on the learning curve. Avant, après le cours. Before, after class. If you've done a tiny bit of French, you already know these. Vers 8 heures. Around 8. Vers 8 heures. Very, very important around. Because around can be translated in many different ways. But in that case, that case of time, you're going to say vers. Vers 8 heures. Depuis trois, depuis trois mois. For three months. That one is tricky. You know... French speakers, when they learn English for the first time, they get a bit confused between since and for. Um, and in French, there's no confusion. When you say that you've done something for three months or um, three months ago you did something or um, since you arrived, um, things happened. In those three examples, you're going to have depuis. Depuis is going to translate the three examples I just named here. Very easy. It's one of these things that French, the French language does in a simpler way than the English language, depending on the point of view, of course, but that's really what I believe. It's easy. It's easy in French. Depuis trois mois. For three months. It also avoids confusions because, you know, for can translate so many different things in English that in French, we have a special word for that. Pendant la journée. During the day. Very easy. During the course of the day, pendant le cours de la journée. And ils partent pour une semaine. They're leaving for a week. And that's what I was saying uh, a couple of seconds ago, saying that for translated so many different ways to relate and situate uh, someone in time in English. But in French, we have different words to translate that. And in the case of an amount of time that will be, that will happen that will take place in the future, we're going to use for. Ils partent pour une semaine. It's in the future. You know? Um, that's something that hasn't happened yet, is in the future. That's a way to remember that pour is going to be preferred over other prepositions of time because it refers to something taking place in the future. And that covered that second time in the video. And now we're going to cover on this spatial prepositions. And this is by far the best part of the video, I believe, because it's a drawing. You know, I went to the to to that uh, step. I, I took that step during making this video where I wanted to make it clear where we can locate a, a gold bar. So have a look here. And if you look carefully at the ship, you'll notice that there is a gold bar inside the ship. It's dans le vaisseau. In, dans. Very easy. To the left. To the left of the ship. If the ship is, is in front of us. To the left of the ship, we're going to say à gauche du vaisseau. À gauche du vaisseau. To the left. We don't say à la gauche, like in theory we would say in English, to the left. But in French, simply to left of the ship. The right. To the right of the ship, à droite du vaisseau. Exactly. Au-dessus du vaisseau, above the ship. Now, on the ship, when the gold bar is on the ship, it's sur le vaisseau. And watch out here, because we don't have the same word between sur and vaisseau. Here, all these three ones, to the left, to the right, and above the ship, we had a du following um, the, uh, the preposition. But here we have the definite article. So watch out for these three because we're going to have a different word in front of vaisseau. Sur le vaisseau, on the ship. Sous le vaisseau, under the ship. Easy. Sur, sous. On, under. Now in front of the ship is going to be devant le vaisseau. And behind the ship 
It's going to be derrière le vaisseau. So, pay special attention to those three prepositions when you locate objects to the left, to the right, above. Visualize that triangle maybe in your head, you know? Visualize a triangle going to the left, to the right, above. And that triangle means that you're going to use another word right after the preposition instead of having uh, this definite article that we have in all the other spatial prepositions of this list. So today, let's sum it up now, if you will. We have prepositions of movement in this video and we covered five of them. Vers, toward. Aller à l'aéroport, going to the airport. We went to the gold mine, up to the gold mine. We went jusqu'à la mine d'or. You're back from the mine. Vous revenez de la mine. Et passer par ici translates to passed by here. Now there were also prepositions of time. Before and after. Avant, après. Around eight. Vers huit heures. Depuis trois mois. For three months. Pendant la journée, during the day. Et ils partent pour une semaine. They're leaving for a week. Pour une semaine. And finally, we had those spatial prepositions. And we had the gold bar in the ship. Dans, to the left, à gauche du vaisseau. To the right, à droite du vaisseau. Above the ship, au-dessus du vaisseau. And finally, on the ship, sur le vaisseau. Under the ship, sous le vaisseau. Devant le ship, in front of the ship. No, devant. <laughs> I said devant le ship. Devant le vaisseau, in front of the ship. And behind the ship is derrière le vaisseau. Are you ready to take on the exercise? Are you ready to try to find out how much you could retain out of this video? Out of this video, the link is below in the description box. I suggest you pay um, just mm, a minute trying to do the exercise. And also you'll find all the theory on the website, clicking the link below the video. Thank you for today and bye for now.